It's called the Tack Room, and it is the most eagerly anticipated awaited restaurant in New York City in many a year, and that is because, in part, uh, the head of it is Chef Thomas Keller. Chef Keller, welcome. Good to have you on Power Lunch. Great, great to be here. Thank you. Last for night was opening night. It's like the opening on Broadway. How'd it go? Uh, it went extremely well. Of course, you know, difference between opening on Broadway and opening a restaurant, we can we can uh, uh, have as many people in our restaurant as we want. So we can limit we can that. Govern. Yeah, you we can, can limit that so the team gets so used to it. The restaurant is is quite large. The footprint here is big. How many seats? Um, there are just less than 200 seats here, and then we have another 30 seats in the lounge. We have a small lounge down there, downstairs, which also has another 30 seats in it. This place, Tack Room, has a very almost, I would say, almost casual feel, almost a throwback feel. Uh, describe why this restaurant, uh -huh. with a, what I would call a very accessible continental menu, there's nothing on it I don't understand. That's good. Uh, which is good. Yeah. Why this restaurant in this place at this time? That's a good question. Uh, 11 years ago, my partners, uh, Steve Ross and Ken Himmel, uh, came to me to ask me if I'd become part of what was to be Hudson Yards. Uh, and of course, I eagerly accepted it, and uh, then we started talking about restaurants. Now, when I was a youngster, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, my mother ran restaurants, which were continental cuisine restaurants. So my entire life, I've, I've, I've kind of you know, aligned myself with this kind of food. Um, although we do very fine dining, I've always wanted to do a continental cuisine restaurant. So the beginning 11 years ago, we started to, to work on this, and today, uh, or yesterday, we opened it. It's so a really. very beautiful space, very comfortable, the kind of place you would come and like to hang out. My question, I guess, is as you do this, how has fine dining or dining at this sort of level changed over the years? Is it less formal? Can people yeah. come in without a sport coat? <laughs> how, what's the feel, the vibe? Yeah, well, you know, we want it to be, to be we, we coined a, 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 a elf uh, as our um, kind of our mantra. We want our, our restaurant here to be energetic, to be a little loud, mm -hmm. and to be fun. So that's what we kind of go off of every night. And we want our guests to come in and be comfortable and kind of feel that expression of, of energy, but also also feel that they have reference points to the food, but also to, the, to their surroundings and the way it feels. This is uh, far from your first rodeo yeah. in, in opening a restaurant in a brand new audacious development in what had been well, up at uh, the Time Warner Center, Columbus Circle was not the nicest right, place right. 20 years ago. Uh, Hudson Yards had long been fallow what does it take to come in and do something like this here? Well, it takes certainly a lot of dedication, a lot of vision. Uh, when I remember meeting uh, the, the related group, Steve and Ken, um, in the early, in early, 2000, in early 2000, and they were telling me about this project at the at Time Warner Center, which was the convention center. Uh, there was no community there. That, that building spawned an entire community around that. And you see what's happened around here in Hudson Yards in the past four years, not just Hudson Yards, but the neighborhood around here and how that's going to yeah. be a community. In Hudson Yards itself, you know, we have restaurants that are becoming the, the, the cornerstone of this community. Um, and, and they're very diverse. Anything from, you know, what Jose Andreas is doing downstairs, very affordable, uh, to a restaurant that, that's Tack Room, which is from an historical perspective. Uh, many restaurants like this in New York back in the 40s and 50s in the heyday. Um, we have David Chang doing his Asian downstairs. Yeah. Uh, so we have a lot of different opportunities for people to come here so and when dine. So when one goes out now in New York City, the restaurants are full, the economy is strong, the place is buzzing. But it's not always that way, and you, out in Yonville uh, at the French Laundry and at Per Se, you have ridden through periods where the economy has gone down a little bit. Yeah. How do you adjust when that happens? Well, I think what we want to do, I don't necessarily think we adjust. I think we always want to give value to our guests for what they're paying for. So as long as we can, as long as we can continue to give our guests a great experience, and when they leave that restaurant, they take that experience and that memory with them, then it adds value to that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not always just about how much money you're spending, but it's about what you're getting for the money that you're spending. A couple of quick questions here, because I notice here there are literally hundreds of people working. How many jobs did you create in this space? Do you know? Um, when, we're, when we're open seven days a week, uh, we've, we've created 160 jobs. 160 yeah. jobs. Uh, as I sit here today and I look out uh, over the years, I, you, I look back over the years, you can see how technology has changed mm -hmm. things. There are screens here that pr bring the order into right. the kitchen. Yeah. Social media, you have to have a presence there. How has that changed the economics of what you do and how does it show up in what the customer pays? Sure, so uh, these screens are, are that help us facilitate the ordering uh, and, and, the, and, the, and, and the cooking of the food. 
Um, the social media aspect helps us bring awareness of who we are to the, the greater population. But you have to pay for that. And, and, exactly. So there is an expense on that. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we didn't have that added expense of a social media department. Now it's, now it's literally a department within restaurants. And, and that expense certainly has to be passed on to, to our guests in one way or another. Let me ask you an impolite question. Do you want people coming in and Instagramming your food and, and yeah. tweeting while they're here? I, I think I, I don't. I don't really care. I think it's it's about the experience for the guests, and as long as they're not evasive uh, to the dining room or uh, disrupting service or things like that, I think it's totally fine. I think people, especially the younger generations, really like that. They want to share what they're doing with with their friends and whoever really cares about them. Well, Chef, thank you so yeah. much for letting us in here thank today. You. Really nice to see you, and it's a great experience. Yeah. I, I I can't tell you this is a fun neighborhood to come to, and this is a fun place to be.